Okay, so in this video, we will sketch the graph of this cubic polynomial. If you remember our previous video, we only need the first and the second derivative, and with finding the critical points and the inflection points, we can easily sketch the graph of any function. Okay, so first, let's differentiate. So let's find the first derivative, y prime. This will be 3x squared minus 12x plus 9. Let us find the second derivative, y double prime, which will be 6x minus 12. And I remember that we use the first derivative to find the critical points and the second derivative to find possible inflection points. Now critical points are zeros of the first derivative or points where the first derivative is undefined. As y prime is a polynomial, it always is defined, so we can only look for possible zeros, and the same goes for the second derivative. And of course, when we have a polynomial, we find zeros by factoring. Well, we can factor 3, and we'll have 3 times x squared minus 4x plus 3, and this quadratic factors as 3 times the product of the terms must be 3, the sum, negative 4. So this is x minus 1 times x minus 3. We can factor the second derivative, factor is 6, and you get 6 times x minus 2. And now that we have the first derivative and the second derivative fully factored, now we're good to go. So let's see. The first thing we may look and sketching the graph of a function are the possible intercepts, the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts. Well, the x-intercepts are the zeros of this function, so we look for possible zeros. Now, don't look too hard if you have a hard time finding the zeros of the function. Only find the zeros if they're fairly easy to find. So, if we look for the zeros of a polynomial, we try to factor it, there's a common factor of x, so if we factor x, we're left with x squared minus 6x plus 9. We can factor this quadratic, and this is a perfect square. This is x minus 3 times x minus 3, so x minus 3 squared. So our function is equal to 0, if and only if either x is equal to 0 or x is equal to 3. So we have two zeros of the function. Our cubic polynomial will be equal to 0 when x is equal to 0, or x is equal to 3. Let's look for the y-intercept. So where the curve will intercept the y-axis. Well, this is simply the y-value when x is 0. This is y at 0, and if you plug in 0, you get, as we already knew, 0. So the y-intercept is 0. Now, let's find our critical points. As we said, these points are not that important, but it's nice if we can find the zeros and the y-intercept. It makes for a slightly more accurate sketch of this function, the graph of this function. The really important points are the critical points and the inflection points. So I'll write CP for critical points. And again, critical points are values of x for which the derivative is equal to 0 or is undefined. As the derivative is a polynomial, it never is undefined, so we can only have critical points where the derivative is 0. So we solve for y prime being equal to 0, and that's true if and only if as we have already factored, this is obvious, if x is 1 or if x is 3. So we have two critical points, 1 and 3. Let's look for the inflection points. And we know that these are possible inflection points, as they may end up being fake inflection points. Again, this would be where the second derivative is 0 or is undefined. The second derivative is a polynomial, never is undefined, 
So we look where it may be equal to zero. And once again, since we have already factored the second derivative, this will obviously be zero when x is equal to two. And now, we're almost good to go. We have our critical points, we have our inflection points, we have our two zeros and the y-intercept. The only question is, what does the curve look like around these critical points, right? These are two values of x where the derivative is zero. So run x equals one and x equals three, the curve will be flat. But the question is, will we have a local maximum, a local minimum, or something else? And of course, if you have a local minimum, the curve is concave up. If you have a local maximum, the curve is concave down. So we can figure out what happens at these points with the help of the second derivative. And this is what we call classifying the critical points. So we now classify the critical points. And the classification again is simply by finding the second derivative at the points of interest. So we want to classify x equals 1, so we do second derivative at 1. If you look up, this will be 6 times 1 minus 2. 1 minus 2 is negative 1, so you get negative 6. We don't care that it's negative 6 so much as it is negative. So now think of it. At x equals 1, the derivative is 0, so the curve is flat there. And since the second derivative is negative at 1, the curve will be concave down. And if the curve is flat at 1 and concave down, we know that we have to have a local maximum. So x equals 1 is a local maximum. So if you visualize what the function would look like around x equals 1, it would look something like this. At x equals 1, the derivative is 0, so the curve is flat, and it's concave down. So it will have to look something like this around x equals 1. So uh, if you think of your portion of the graph around x equals 1, the curve will have to look something like this. All right, so we have classified the first critical point. Let us classify now the second critical point, which is x equals 3. The derivative at 3 is also 0, so the curve will be flat at x equals 3. Let's see if it's concave up or down. So we look for the second derivative at x equals 3. So let's look up. This is our second derivative. Replace x by 3. You get 3 minus, one, which, three minus 2, which is 1. 1 times 6 is 6, and again, we don't care so much is it equal to 6 as much as it is positive. If the second derivative at 3 is positive, the curve will be concave up. <coughs> Sorry. So if the curve is concave up, it will look something like this, so the value x equals 3 will be a local minimum. So we can look locally around x equals 3, what the graph of the function look like. Roughly speaking, right? this is just the shape. The y value could be positive or negative. We just look for the shape of the graph around x equals 1. And now we just look for the shape of the graph around x equals 3. And we've just said that around x equals 3, since 3 is a critical point where the derivative is equal to 0, the curve will be flat around x equals 3. And because the second derivative is positive, the curve will be concave up. So the graph will have to look something like this around x equals 3. It's a local minimum. 
And again, the function of y could be positive or negative. We don't, well, we do know actually, but we don't have to care here for now. We only want to look for the overall shape of the graph around our two critical points. And that's it. Now we have classified our two critical points. And now we can look at trying to make an accurate sketch. So looking at a table of values around the points, sorry, around the points of interest, which are the critical points, the inflection point, and the zeros of our function. One thing is worth mentioning here, sometimes when you want to classify your critical points to figure out if they are local minimum or maximum, this will not always be the case. So you may end up with a second derivative that is equal to zero at a critical point. And in this case, the classification will fail <coughs> but as we'll see when we consider examples of this, we'll only have to look at the second derivative on the left and on the right of our point, and this will fix our problem. But for, at, for now, we had two critical points in 1 and 3, and the second derivative gave us a proper classification of 1 being a local maximum, 3 being a local minimum. And now we construct our table of values. Let's move on to a second page. So we have found all the points of interest. We have classified the critical points. Now is our table of values. We only look for values of x that are important points, therefore zeros of the function, y-intercepts, critical, and or inflection points. For more complicated curves, you may need to look at a few additional values of x, but this is, you'll find out, when you try sketching the function, sometimes you'll say, well, there is a bit of ambiguity around this value of x, and then you'll add an additional point in your table of values. But that's only after you're trying to sketch the graph and you encounter some problems. So we had our zeros. x equals 0 and x equals 3 were two zeros of the function, if you remember. So y at both of these values was equal to 0. Then we had 3 was a critical point, and we have its y value. 1 was also a critical point. And if you look back to the function, which was x cubed, right? The function is x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9. If you replace x by 1, you get 1 minus 6, negative 5, plus 9, positive 4. And the only other point of interest was the value x equals 2, which was our inflection point. Again, we need the y value here. So replacing x by 2, you get 2 cubed, which is 8, minus 2 squared is 4, times 6 is 24, plus 9 times 2 is 18, and so you get positive 2. So when x is 2, y happens to be also positive 2. Now we have our table of values. We have classified the two critical points. We have our inflection point. We are now ready to make a very accurate sketch of the graph of our function. One thing is worth mentioning is your sketch does not have to be up to scale. So don't bother using a ruler and being really precise. All you want to show is that you understand how to portray the key elements of the graph. Now, if you look at your axes, the only points of interest are positive values of x, so we'll concentrate our x-axis around 0 to 3. And again, the y-axis, because these are all non-negative values, so we'll adjust our y-axis accordingly. One thing is worth mentioning, and that is we haven't looked for vertical asymptotes yet. 
But if you remember, a vertical asymptote is a value of x where the function blows up, therefore is undefined. Since we have a cubic polynomial, it is always defined, therefore there are no vertical asymptotes. Okay, so let's plot our points. We have the point x equals 0, y equals 0. Let's produce a rough scale, so let's go with, say this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, 4, and beyond, negative 1, negative 2, and beyond. The next point is x equals 3, y equals 0, so 1, 2, 3, another 0 of our function. Then we have the other critical point, x equals 1, y equals 4, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, say, so x equals 1, y equals 4, x equals 1, y equals 1, 2, 3, 4, and we have the point 2, 2, x equals 2, y equals 2, and this was our possible inflection point. So now we have only four points, and I claim that with only these four points we can sketch the graph very accurately. Always start with your critical points. Figure out what the curve looks like around the critical points, but we already have done so since we have classified our two critical points. So let's go back. If you look at the critical point, x equals 1, it was a local maximum. So around x equals 1, the curve looks something like this. And around x equals 3, the curve looks something like this. It was a local minimum. So we know that around x equals 1, the graph will look like this. Around x equals 3, the graph will look like this. So let's handle the part of the graph that is around x equals 1 and x equals 3. So as we have just said, around x equals 1, we have a local maximum. So the curve looks something like this. And around x equals 3, the curve was concave up. We had a local minimum. So it will look something like this. It is flat there. There's a 0, and then concave up. And now what's interesting is I claim with this that we are essentially done. Let me label my axes, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 1, negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And why are we done? Well, think about it. If a function goes from increasing to decreasing, or vice versa, the derivative has to go from positive to negative, or negative to positive. Since our derivative is continuous, it can only go from positive to negative or negative to positive if it crosses zero. Therefore, if you cross a critical point. So if you do not cross a critical point, the function will never change from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. And the same goes for concavity. Our second derivative was continuous. So the only way to have a change in concavity is if the second derivative goes from positive to negative or negative to positive and because of continuity the second derivative would have to cross the value of zero. So if you look to the right of x equals 3 there are no critical points and no inflection points. So the function will never change its behavior according to increasing or decreasing or concave up or concave down. So beyond x equals 3, the curve is concave up and increasing. It will remain concave up and increasing forever. Same to the left of 1. Because this is just a 0, it is neither a critical or an inflection point. So to the left of 1, there are no critical points and no inflection points. So the curve will never change its behavior again. And because to the left of 1, it is increasing and concave down, it will remain increasing and concave down forever. Let's look around this point now. Remember that x equals 2 was our only possible inflection point. Well, let's see if it is an inflection point. 
the curve here to the left of x equals 2 is concave down. To the right of x equals 2, the curve is concave up. So you see from 1 to 3, the curve goes from concave down to concave up. So there is a change in concavity. And concavity can only change at an inflection point. So the exact point where the curve will change from concave down to concave up is at x equals 2. So the curve is concave down, 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 up to this point, And now, right away, the curve becomes concave up. Because this was our possible inflection point, And there was a change in concavity because the curve goes from concave down to concave up. And concavity can only change at a possible infection point. And also we know that as x becomes bigger and bigger, the curve, since there are no more inflection or critical points, will remain increasing and concave up forever. The only question is, will we have possibly a right horizontal asymptote? And the same for the left, will we have a left horizontal asymptote? So we have to look for the limit as y goes as x goes to positive or negative infinity to see if we have a possible right or left horizontal asymptotes. So let's check. The limit as x goes to infinity of y, the function was x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x. The limit as x goes to infinity, sorry, negative infinity of y again, so x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9 x. And this will use our intuition. We know that when you deal with polynomials, when x is either very large positively or negatively, the only term that matters is the largest power of x, so x cubed. These terms are insignificant compared to the x cubed term. So when x goes to positive infinity, x cubed goes to positive infinity. So we do not have a right horizontal asymptote. When x blows up, y blows up as well. So our graph will just shoot up to infinity. And as x goes to negative infinity, because 3 is odd, x cubed will go to negative infinity. So you see that as x goes to negative infinity, y will also shoot down to negative infinity. So we do not have here any horizontal asymptotes. And this captures the graph completely. Right? We have figured out the local behavior of our graph around the critical and inflection points. Away from these points, the graph will never change again. Because to have a change in the graph, there has to be a critical point or an inflection point. And beyond 3 and 1, there are no more critical or inflection points. The curve will never change its behavior. Increasing concave up, increasing concave up forever. And we know it blows up to positive infinity. Right? This is a rather bad sketch, but it's concave up and increasing to infinity. So it's a little smoother than that. And here it's concave down and also increasing. But we know that when x is 0, y is 0. So we'll have to go through this point. So it will look something like this. And now we have a perfectly, we have perfectly captured the key properties of the graph of x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x. We have a local maximum at x equals 1. And it is a local maximum because you see around x equals 1, y attains its largest value at x equals 1. But it is local because if you look to the right, there are even bigger values of y away from x equals 1. So it's only a local maximum. It is a maximum only around x equals 1. x equals 3 is a local minimum. Because again, if you only look around x equals 3, Around x equals 3, the value of the function attains its minimum value exactly at x equals 3. Around 3, if you are away from 3, you only get larger y values. 
So this is indeed a local minimum, but it is just a local minimum because if you go to the left, you will get even smaller values of y. And our possible infection point x equals 2 is a real infection point because the curve does change concavity. It goes from concave down, hits 2, then concave up. So our point x equals 2 is a real infection point. And that's it. And this is how you can sketch a graph of any function by studying the only points of importance, which are the critical points, the infection points, and if we had a more complicated function, we would also consider vertical and horizontal asymptotes.